One thing is that she could verbalize a goal. A goal could be belonging. And then what I could do is I could have a new phrase. It would be like redefining early. So you could redefine the problem early. You could define the problem in many different ways. You could define it as something within the individual or something developmental or something that happens among people. But you could redefine the solution. And that redefining the solution was giving her this resonant phrase, being in integrity with herself. Now, that's an unusual construction. And the novelty, we know that novelty causes neurogenesis, the novelty will be resonant. So something that's creative, something that's novel. And I wanted to ease her into an experiential realization of that phrase, not just a cognitive understanding. Mm -hmm. So one of the things that I did was to use gestural language. 50% of brain processing is dedicated to vision. Exactly. Uh -huh. okay. All right. So, and because whatever we say, the, uh, we are only able to express a fraction, the tip of the iceberg, of the underlying emotion, mood, state that exists in subterranean levels. Now, if we want to appeal to deeper centers of the brain, we can use gestures and make images come visually alive. So creating images for people by using my arm or objects in the room, as we'll see later, uh -huh. is one way of making a simple idea come alive. The, I, the, the concept here is that people know, she already knows what it is that she needs to do. Now, does she realize what she knows? And how do you bridge the gap from the land of knowing to the land of realizing? And my conception is that it's the experiences that we live that bridge that gap. So to me, psychotherapy is a symbolic drama of change, the imperative of which is by living this experience, you will be different. You'll be able to cope more adequately. You'll be able to change. So at this point, what you're doing initially is she comes in and she's somebody who's uh, she's a bit passive, she gets pushed around, we, we hear a little bit about her history and her, uh, some losses she's experienced, so we have, she has uh, the, sure. the reasons, all the, all the reasons for, we, we get the background of what her issues are. So what you're trying to do in this early stage is you're trying to give her a, a, a uh, enhanced experience of where she's going, and you're trying to tap into, so you're taking, this is a problem that she's talked about uh, I am sure, quite a bit, and she's aware of it, and she's in the field, and you're trying to take her to give her a new experience with, with the use of the physical gestures, and also there's this element of using trance and trance-like language. Talk a little bit about that and, and the role that uh, using some of your tools as a hypnotist plays at, at this stage with, with her and throughout this session. Sure. A lot of what I'm doing is intentional, and I would say that two-thirds of what I'm doing is being is is thoughtful that the choice of words the choice of the rhythm of those words the way in which I formulate the sentence is based in my understanding of hypnosis where in hypnosis we use many different grammatical linguistic forms in order to elicit a change in somebody's state so uh, and when we studied Erickson, we saw one of the most precise communicators. Erickson used words like a surgeon would use a scalpel. Uh -huh. Every word, every nuance of the word, every gesture, every nuance of the gesture was focused. Now, the effect of that was on me and many of the other students and patients who saw Erickson, I never felt so loved in my life that anybody would work that assiduously to be uh -huh. so precise in touching me. It, it was stunning. I get a chill right now even remembering that 
Mm -hmm. because it was just something that I hadn't experienced before. And I'm trying to emulate that. I'm trying to be extremely precise mm 